it's really good to have you here and uh, I got something really special. Welcome to Basic Benjamin. Today, you're going to want to really stick around for this one because I'm going to be shooting something that I actually considered selling my S3 sedan. And if you know me, you know how much I love that car. So I'm going to, I almost sold that car for this car that I'm going to shoot today. And uh, if you're a vintage BMW enthusiast, you're going to love this vlog. It's raining and overcast and uh, I'm sure you don't want to drive with me all the way through to Pretoria. So I tell you what, why don't you uh, make your way there. Buckle up, this is going to be quite a ride. Enjoy, see you there. How's it man, how are you? How's it man, good you're, you're good. Yeah, good. Ready for today? Always. Cool, let's go. So today I'm out here in Pretoria, South Africa. Today we're in a 1988 BMW 323i. This one's a little bit more special though, as it's got the 325i motor put into it, as well as a few optional extras in this car, as well as the racing exhaust, which, I mean, you can just kind of hear it in the back, but I mean, it just gets louder and louder the more you drive it and the harder you drive it. I'm gonna be driving another car a little bit later, but the reason that I'm driving one of these cars and this car right now is because I really wanna understand what BMW was all about and everything that came about this culture when it comes to BMW. Now, this being the 323, the, this was like the first three series that was like the luxury brand in South Africa before the 323 IL came out. And then obviously a little bit later when it adopted to the triple three, which was like basically the M3 because it wasn't in the country. And one amazing thing is that the triple three was actually built by BMW South Africa for South Africa. So this being the 323i, it was one of the cars that I really wanted to drive. And one of my good friends, Marco, actually provided me with this car today. It's actually his dad's car. And his dad used to work for BMW and really kitted this car out. It's still got the original paint. It's got racing tires, the racing exhaust from when they used to race. Uh, you can even feel it's got a racing clutch brakes as well as the accelerator cable has been changed around a little bit just to make it a little bit more race proof if you will and I mean I wanted to drive this car because of everything that was built onto it but as well as everything that this car can do because everyone says well there's a certain culture behind BMW and I never really understood that because with the new modern day naturally aspirated or modern day turbocharged uh, 3 series you don't really get this feeling of driving whereas this was the racing steering wheel it just it just encompassed you and pulled you into what the car is all about and what BMW was all about. Everything is still analog which is really amazing. It took me quite a while to get used to this car, not only driving it but as well as operating the mirrors on the side here as well as your windows from the middle. Today is the perfect day to drive this because it's overcast. Pretoria is generally known to be extremely hot and today this car is overcast so the colors just pop, everything just pops. The one amazing thing about this car is that all the paint is original which is really amazing to actually think that they didn't change any of this car. It's still completely original and it's something that a lot of people are trying to find. A lot of enthusiasts will obviously try to buy this car because of its originality. The one thing that really got to me was the average consumption, it being analog. Now to me I was trying to figure this thing out. I thought it was the boost but at the end of the day it's the analog stick and obviously when you accelerate it increases and decreases but as well as you've got LEDs right in the front of here that'll explain to you when you need to go for an oil service or you need to go to an inspection now that is something that a lot of cars just pop up on your dash and just say well you know you need to change the oil like my S3 today or you need to go and you know get the car serviced whereas this the whole car became yours you could figure out everything you could probably service the car yourself as well whereas these days modern day cars with its computers you can't but the amazing thing also about this is just the fact that this amazing exhaust and the driving experience on this car the body roll just everything about this car just feels so much more real just so much more connected to the driver you feel so much more in control and that's the one thing that i absolutely love about this car the one thing that i thought would be its downfall which would obviously be its vintage or old feel has actually become its strength or its greatest strength but even though it's being old with the, the creaks it just gives it character and the nice thing I really enjoy about old school BMs is the idea of character it has so much character behind the car oh, wait. check at this sorry timer I wonder if this is like your onboard computer 
that's what a lot of modern day cars these days lack is the effect of actually having the drivability but not only that of having the fun of driving the one thing about driving a car is all about how it makes you feel and driving this bm makes you feel pretty amazing bms is that you can take the revs really high and the faster you go the louder it gets and this is something really cool about bm is because with the straight sixes or with the V6s, you could actually feel how the car was reacting and responding to you with every single movement, with every single shake. You could feel what the wheels were doing in front of you through the steering. Even though it didn't have power steering, you could still feel every single thing that happened through the cars. And that is something that the modern day cars will never really have or lack of, you know? And that's something that I think a lot of people are missing out on. And, uh, cars ready to start putting that back. Obviously technology is advancing itself and it's all about consumption and ozone gases. At the same time, you want a car that you can drive and not only that, you want a car that you can enjoy driving. And with this, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> and we are finally in the M2. This is a car that I was highly considering changing my S3 sedan for and you have no idea how much and how badly I wanted to drive one of these cars. It has been forever since I was able to get my hands on one and Marco tended to have two. He had the 323 as well as this which is his daily. Now he also used to have an S3 and he changed to a TTS thereafter and then finally to the M2. Whoa. I'm itching so bad to even sell my S3 to buy one of these. Now the reason being is because it's also a small sedan and I've got such a love for a small sedan. I don't really like the bigger sedans. I used to love the old school Audis when they used to have the small sedan or the small Evans type cars. But with the new BMW M2, they've opened up another market as they have the new RS3 sedan. That's obviously the competitor for the M2. But at the same time, with that being said, is that the M2 just seems a lot more powerful, a lot more responsive. All right, so you guys know that I'm not a motor journalist, neither do I want to be. I tend to focus primarily on how the car reacts and how the car responds and the feel of the car in driving it, if you want to buy one of these. Now, if you guys give a listen to this, insane over there you can see your kilowatt your power outputs as well as your newton meters while you're driving i mean about 300 kilowatts of power out just on that stint and i mean the power is delivered straight to you so all you have to do is tap down just to start up your nuclear power jet <laughs> this, this car is just i'm at a loss for words i had everything that i wanted to say today about this car how it drives the way it drives the way it tucks itself around you and obviously all the stats but just driving one of these cars especially after driving the 323 you can really respect and really appreciate how technology has advanced and where it is today. And not only is this car one of the most powerful cars on the market, not only from BMW, but in general, especially with the small sedan range, but it's also one of the best cars that I have ever driven. It just feels like you're in control still. It hasn't taken away any of the fun as a lot of these Audis do. Um, Merc as well, they got an amazing sound, but it just seems like it's, it's, it's missing something. And with this BMW M2, it just feels like everything was packaged correctly. It just feels like all the technology works with the person driving the car. And I think that is something that is really important when it comes to you know owning a car, especially a little hot sedan or a hot hatch these days. It must be fun to drive, but at the same time, it must be easy to drive. And it mustn't take away from the user experience, the user drivability. It just feels like all that technology, if you want it to be all completely turned off, you can. But if you want it on, it's there to pretty much safeguard you from crashing into a wall. Because with, the, with this power being distributed all the way to the back, it's something that you don't want to really turn the traction control off. And when it comes to tuning cars, everyone obviously hits their limit. Everyone kind of says, okay, well, this car's a little bit boring and, you know, maybe I should put exhausts on it or induction. And I've done a few covers of performance companies that do this and can offer the service. But at the same time, when it comes to this car, it almost feels like you don't have to do it. It feels like it's all there for you when you need it to be. And the nice thing about that is that the power to weight ratio on this car is so minimal that when you put your foot down to the floor, you instantly feel the power. It obviously helps so much when it comes to eco driving, when you need power on demand. And with this car, it just all works so well and so well together. Yes. But the power and the way that this car responds is incredible. 
incredible. The sound is amazing. The, the way that it works is amazing. Every part of this car just works so well together and it's just finished off amazingly. And it has been such, such a long wait for me to drive this car. It has been something that I've been wanting to drive for so long and finally getting the opportunity to do it, it just lived up to all my expectations. If you have ever been, or if you have ever get the opportunity to drive in one of these, definitely do so. Uh, drive in it, drive behind someone, try and race it, well, don't. So with it living up to my expectations, it was something that I was so scared to drive because I thought, oh, what happens if it doesn't live up to the expectations and if it doesn't work and what about all that? And I can honestly and truthfully say that this car is one of the best cars that I've ever driven.